dear students uh, today we will discuss little more things a little more about nmr uh, we will concentrate on two aspect one is the nmr uh, sensitivity the other aspect is the nmr signal the theory behind nmr signal detection okay these two topics we will try to uh, cover today and uh, as we have learned in the previous class that the certain nuclei possess a spin nuclei which are having non zero spin can be studied by nmr spectroscopy and some in, uh, some data or some interpretation can be made okay <clears throat> and what are the nuclei that are uh, having non zero spin and what are the nuclei having zero spin that we have discussed and on an average what we have discussed uh, what we have learned is that the nuclei which are having non zero spin they are they behave like a tiny magnets okay and uh, they try to align if you place it in excellent magnetic field they try to align with respect to the magnetic field the arrangement of population uh, can be understood in terms of the uh, the boltzmann distribution so when you have more than one uh, energy levels it doesn't matter what type of energy level that you are dealing with maybe electronic energy level maybe vibrational energy level rotational energy level or player or uh, for that discussion maybe nuclear energy spin energy states so whatever it is it doesn't matter if you have more than one energy state the population available will try to rearrange among these energy states and what is the distribution at which these population let's say you have 100 population and these population how these are actually arranged among these available energy state is basically uh, discussed or uh, in terms of the boltzmann distribution okay so when you are dealing with the half spin nuclei i have given the reason that you know most of the nmr discussion with, uh, in a msc classroom it will be uh, for the half spin nuclei so if you are dealing with the half spin nuclei let's say for that matter it is a proton nuclei the proton nuclei or the hydrogen nuclei what we call it is a proton this proton uh, uh, if you have a 100 protons these 100 protons will try to uh, distribute will try to distribute among the available energy levels in presence of magnetic field okay in presence of magnetic field if there is no magnetic field then all the nuclear energy states the two nuclear energy state alpha beta states or plus half state or minus half states these are basically identical in other words they are said to be degenerate but if you keep them in the external magnetic field strength uh, strength of some b0 then there is a separation take place okay and once you have these two states when you have only one state on the population uh, the available 100 nuclei will be in the ground state itself but when you have two states how these are basically arranged how many nuclei will be in the ground state how many nuclei will be in the excited state is something that are uh, related to the uh, the sensitivity of nmr technique uh, it understood that the in the previous class i think we have done two three exercises and we learned if you remember what is the difference between the let's say if you have cut the uh, proton nuclei at a magnetic field strength of 5.8 to tesla what is the approximate energy level i mean what is the approximate energy difference between the alpha and beta states do you remember the number anybody we have done the exercise already for proton and carbon i think you all have calculated it is approximately of the order of 10 to the power of minus 25 joules right such a very uh, such a small energy difference okay and uh, such a energy uh, because since the energy gap is very small uh, it is likely that the nuclei will try to arrange in both the energy state equally okay almost equally they will arrange it okay if there is equal distribution exactly and again there is no discussion of nmr signal why because the nmr signal depends upon the imbalance in the population If there is no imbalance in the population there cannot be any transition from the one state to the other state right 
So the NMR sensitivity, in other words, that actually depends upon uh, the population uh, difference between the alpha and beta state uh, for a, a half spin nuclei. Okay, if the population difference is more, then there is likely that you will have you will get a better sensitivity from that particular uh, nuclei. If the population difference is small, then uh, the sensitivity goes down, and then very difficult to detect the signal. Okay, now, now, what can actually, uh, what can actually uh, improve the NMR sensitivity? Well, the NMR sensitivity can be improved by majorly by uh, uh, three factors. One is the gyromagnetic ratio. The gyromagnetic ratio, how it is how it is basically uh, related. You remember that we have an expression that delta E is the energy difference between the uh, two nuclear spin state for an half, half spin uh, half spin nuclei is given by gamma h, cr h cross B zero gamma h cross b0 so the energy difference actually depends upon gamma right if gamma increases the energy difference basically increases okay the energy gap increases and then what happened in such a situation most of the nuclei let's say uh, in the previous case i said that equally populated but then when the energy gap is increased that you know since the energy gap is more then the nuclei will not go to the excited state. Some nuclei find it very comfortable. They will stay at the ground state itself, ground nuclear energy state itself. That means, in other words, that the difference, the difference between these two nuclear spin state is going to be increased. Right? You got the point. It's very, very important that if the, the gyromagnetic ratio is, if it is increasing, then the energy gap is also increasing according to this uh, principle according to the simple uh, relation what we have derived in the previous class in other words that it's with increase in the gamma the difference increases and then that in, that basically helps in uh, increasing the population difference what do i mean by difference population difference means that the okay there are i said about example 100 nuclei this 100 nuclei initially let's say uh, i said I made a comment saying that equally populated, mostly, almost equally populated, I said. I mean, what I mean is that, okay, let's say 48 is in the upper energy state and then the remaining 52 in the ground energy state. What is the difference? The difference when you take it is only two uh, nuclei. The two nuclei is an excess in the ground state, nuclear energy state, right? That is what I mean, so mostly, they are populated equally means that is what I mean by. Okay, so this, if the gamma is increasing, then naturally what happens, the energy gap is increasing, then the population, some of the population, they don't find that much of thermal energy to go to that excited state, uh, excited nuclear energy state. So therefore they find it comfortable to sit at the ground state itself. So in that in such a situation, so we are basically improving the difference. So if it is improving, then how it is basically related to uh, the sensitivity? Well, the after all, it is absorption spectroscopy. So when we have the difference between the two nuclear energy state, and if it is increasing, then the population difference is increasing. That means that earlier we have two nuclei which can be promoted by shining light. Earlier, the example which I have taken that 100 uh, nuclei, if, it, if you take it, then in a normal situation that 48 in the excited state and 52 in the ground state. Let's say this is an example. Now, if the gamma is increasing, so therefore the two nuclei which are in the excess, uh, they will basically try to make a transition when you shine appropriate uh, electromagnetic radiation, that is radio waves. Now, if the gamma is increasing and then this population difference is increasing, then what, what happens that you have more number of nuclei that can transit from one state to the other state, especially from the ground state to the excited state. Okay, so that is the way that it helps. Basically, the gamma helps uh, improving the uh, NMR uh, signal sensitivity. Okay, and that is uh, uh, the another factor is that the external magnetic field strength. 
So I, if I, that is also from the equation. You can see that the energy gap again, it improved. It is improved. It will increase by increasing the the external magnetic field strength. So that way also you can improve the population difference, and therefore that the more number of transitions can be possible. So NMR, there are two things, and then there is one more thing that the temperature. So there can be a small derivation part, which you can go through the PW Atkin textbook. You will find this uh, a small derivation what I have discussed, and uh, the population difference actually uh, depends upon these factors. The population difference, the alpha, n alpha minus n beta. What do I mean by this? So n alpha is the number of population. Uh, in the alpha state and beta in number of uh, nuclei with a beta spin so alpha and beta please remember that alpha is the spin which is pointing uh, upward direction that is along the z axis and then beta is pointing towards uh, uh, opposite direction of the z axis that means it is opposing so alpha spins aligning and beta means uh, anti parallel parallel and anti parallel spins so now the population, there are two spin states, and this population difference is what I mean by n alpha minus n beta. Uh, it is nothing but uh, the gamma h cross B0n uh, divided by 2 kT. So, all the terms, if you look at gamma h cross B0, we have understood. n is what? n is the total population. It is nothing but the, if I ask you what, are the, what is the total population, it is a summation of all the population that are actually populated in all the uh, energy states. So in, the, in this case, since we are dealing with the half spin nuclei, so there are two states. So an alpha plus and beta obviously gives the total population that is n. So from this expression, again, we can also say that uh, if you improve the total population, I mean, if you take more concentrated solution, so the population means what? N means basically directly to, uh, related to the concentration n is the number of nuclei how do you improve the number of nuclei well you have to take more concentrated solution that is one way that you can improve the number signal and uh, you can look at that the in the denominator you have the kt uh, the molecular constant and the temperature and if you lower the temperature the sensitivity again the population difference can be basically improved and uh, uh, then you can basically improve the signal sensitivity. Okay, so these are very, very important aspects that one should remember. Uh, we can do a small math, uh, which I am not going to do it, but then I will give this uh, slides. So you can just go through it. That's a small exercise. Now, let's say, uh, what is the population difference of a proton nuclei if it is kept it in a external magnetic field strength of 5.87? Tesla. Okay. What is the population difference? If I if I ask you a problem like this to calculate the population difference, how one should basically calculate this number? Well, first of all, you have to use the Boltzmann distribution uh, formula to calculate this one. And the solution is given. In this expression, what we don't know is the uh, basically delta E. Delta E, how it can be calculated? Well, delta is, is equal to gamma h cross B0. So B is the field strength. Gamma, gamma, how do we know? Already I mentioned that it is a proton nuclei. So for a proton nuclei, if it is placed in an external magnetic field strength of 5.87 Tesla, such a nuclei, what is the energy gap that can be calculated? That means the delta E can be calculated. Okay, And the temperature is already given that at 25 degrees centigrade or 98 Kelvin, this temperature is given. So from this, you can actually evaluate the fraction. From the fraction, and knowing the fact that n alpha plus n beta uh, has to be one, right? n alpha plus n beta has to be one. And since you are taking the fraction, fraction, the summation of the the total population in the ground state and then upper state, uh, 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 the uh, uh, higher energy state, it has to be one. So on that ground, if you try to do a simple exercise, you will understand that there will be an alpha is equal to 0 0.5, uh, 0, 0, 001. And then n beta is equal to 0 0.4, uh, double line, double line. And if you do, in a, if you represent these numbers in, a, in other words, these fractions in other words, in terms of number of nuclei, 
approximately that uh, out of uh, 1 million out of 1 million there were about uh, 20 nuclei are basically excess in excess in the ground nuclear energy state at compa as compared to the uh, excited state okay these fractions how do we understand these fractions you can understand well you can just do it so out of the 1 million that is 10 uh, basically uh, 10 lakh out of the 10 lakh nuclei if you consider out of that almost almost everything is uh, equally populated but only the difference if you take only about 20 nuclei will be excess the remaining nuclei out of the 10,000 this thing it will be on the excited state the difference will be only 20 number that means that this 20 number is something that it will contribute directly to the animal signal okay even even though it is a, a small number but then it is very uh, it is possible nowadays to record the signal with this uh, small population right you can just go through this uh, aspect and we will try to understand that this is what it is written what i have explained you just uh, go through it and uh, this is a quantum mechanical description of the same thing which I, what i have explained and if you increase this uh, field strength, then we can basically improve also. So the ratio, suppose if you, if you kept it in a 9.39 Tesla, then this population difference, again, it will increase. So there will be about 60 nuclei will be excess in uh, the ground state as compared to the excited state. So it all depends upon the field strength, what we, have, uh, de what we are actually dealing with. So overall, the NMR sensitivity, uh, there is another expression which I am not going to derive, but then try to understand this, that the population, the NMR sensitivity, in other words, the signal actually depends upon the number of nuclei and the gyromagnetic ratio. And it actually depends upon temperature as well, that inversely proportional to temperature and directly proportional to the square of the B0, that is the applied static magnetic field strength and b1 it also depends upon the square of the uh, excited uh, exciting radio frequency pulse it also depends upon the square of the uh, radio frequency pulse so these are some of the points that one should remember with regard to this thing so in terms of uh, the energy gap if you want to uh, explain the sensitivity that the energy gap if you improve then the sensitivity can be improved okay if you improve how the energy gap can be improved well you can improve either a b0 or you can take a nuclei which is having a higher gyromagnetic ratio so these are some of the things all these things are basically interconnected and the NMR signal is also depends upon the natural abundance of the nuclei which you are dealing with okay that is another point that one should remember, which is not there, but uh, you should, uh, it is quite obvious. Let me explain this with an example of a proton and carbon 13 and then 15 nitrogen. Okay. And we know that the, what is the natural abundance of proton? Do you, anybody remember this? What is the natural abundance of proton? Okay, find out. So almost uh, close to 100. Okay, almost close to 100, but not 100. So similarly, 13 carbon, it is also, uh, is very, very less as, as compared to the proton uh, natural abundance. The 13 carbon abundance is very, very less. It is only 1.1. Okay, and as compared to the, uh, and then the, the nitrogen 15, it is even less. Nitrogen mostly exists in the 14th, uh, that is 14, but then a small percentage of it will exist as a uh, uh, will exist as a uh, nitrogen 50. So that is approximately 0.37. It is already given. We thought you will answer from by looking at these numbers. Well, that is the one. And um, now, since the proton is almost out of the 100 nuclei, what is the meaning of natural abundance? So if you take, if you consider 100 nuclei, out of which almost 99.9 uh, 
8 or something like that, it will be present in a prot the proton state, hydrogen 1. And deuterium will be some percentage, right? And then tritium will be some percentage. So almost all the protons will present in a proton state. So you have you will have a, a nice a signal if you are dealing with a such a anomal, uh, if you are dealing with a such a nuclear. On the other hand, when you look at the carbon 13, its natural abundance is only 1.1 percentage. That means that out of 100 nuclei, if you consider that 99 will be present uh, uh, carbon 12, and then carbon 13 will be uh, will be one uh, one nuclei. That means uh, out of the 100, only one nuclei will be uh, will be found as a 13 carbon. Okay, so the, naturally, uh, when you are dealing with uh, uh, a spectroscopy of such nuclei, and uh, you just remember that when you have a hundred nuclei, uh, and uh, this nuclei is a half spin, half spin nuclei, and then there are two spin uh, sp uh, nuclear energy states. So, out of the hundred nuclei in the ground state, only you will find that one particular nuclei. You don't know. So, the probability of uh, these uh, finding 13 carbon or probability of finding nitrogen 15 is very very less therefore naturally the number of transition again it matters so the uh, as a result of which the the, the population difference uh, it is small and then it basically uh, we don't get much of a signal out of the nuclei which is having a very less natural abundance especially 13 carbon and 15 nitrogen. Whereas proton, when you're dealing with, you don't have absolutely no problem. You can deal with it, it's very good. How these things are, uh, how, how you can basically visualize these things? Well, look at this vector, what is shown in this slide, that this is uh, is a proton enamor spectrum of a caffeine. You know that the caffeine, uh, natural product so it's a spectrum is given here it's a proton and spectrum you can see the lines are very much sharp and very intense and the baseline what you see the baseline means this is the horizontal line what i call it as a baseline the baseline is very smooth whereas when you uh, deal with the carbon 13 and our spectrum of the same molecule that is that is this particular one you look at that the baseline itself very noisy the baseline itself very noisy and then this is not very intense as this one and this is not very smooth also okay and you don't get many signals okay and you don't get uh, the full signals okay and then coming to this uh, well this is again the same carbon 13 nmr spectrum of same carbon but then it was recorded with a little more scans so this point i will come again in the next slide uh, the sensitivity can be uh, is, is something that uh, it was an issue uh, uh, in the initial days, but then over the period of time, then it was improved. And nowadays, uh, sensitivity is not an issue. Okay, in the 1947 or 48s, this sensitivity was actually uh, very very less because the magnet what they were actually using is very small magnet. It is static bar magnet they used to use it, but later on. Over the period of time, people have developed the electromagnets. Electromagnets. So the electricity can be passed through certain elements, and then it can produce very precise, uh, huge magnetic field strength. Okay. So mag high magnetic fields fields can be created by mixing up the the electron, mixing up the electric currents, uh, and the magnetism property. So that is how that people have improved. So later on. Subsequently, people have come up with uh, another aspect like the superconducting uh, supermagnet. So people have uh, invented a new material which basically behave like a supermagnets. Certain elements like lanthanum and some type of rare earth metals basically when you lower the temperature, they behave like a supermagnets, right? So that is what uh, is something that nowadays people are using mostly those type of thing. But then you have to lower the temperature only then they behave like a uh, they will be a huge uh, magnetic field strengths. So over the years, the, the, the sensitivity is improved. Over the years, the sensitivity is improved. Okay, so here in this graph, if you look at the ear versus the resonating proton frequencies are given. Okay, NMR spectrometers are basically named 
uh, in terms of the frequency at which a proton is resonating in that particular instrument. A given instrument comes with a, a precise number of components. So one of the major components is the static, of course, the magnetic, magnetic uh, uh, magnet. And this magnet, at what, suppose if you place a proton in that particular magnet, at which that a proton will resonate, it becomes the resonating it becomes the name of the NMR spectrometer. So NMR spectrometers are called NMR spectrometer 400 megahertz. If you say NMR spectrometer, it is just general. But then if you say this uh, frequency, that frequency actually is the proton frequency at which it will precess. You remember that I have told you in the previous class, the moment you keep a non-zero magnetic field, uh, non-zero magnet, uh, the, any, sorry, non-zero nuclei, non-zero spin uh, nuclei in the external magnetic field, and then it will process with a frequency, and that frequency what we call the Larmor field. Uh, so the NMR spectrometers are actually named in terms of the resonating frequency of a proton, okay, in that particular magnetic field uh, strength. If you increase the strength of uh, the magnet, then obviously the frequency, resonating frequency will increase. In other words, basically it will improve the sensitivity also. And here, there is another diagram what you can see here that signal to noise ratio. What do? What is the meaning of signal to noise ratio? So this is signal. For example, if you take this proton spectrum of caffeine, uh, this is what is the signal and here, the horizontal line, what we call it as a baseline, and this is also called it as a noise. And here, noise is very, very small, right? Noise is almost not there. So this ratio, signal to noise ratio, is something that it is a, a, a matter of concern in spectroscopy in general. And uh, in this particular uh, spectrum, carbon-13 spectrum, what you can see, that there is a huge noise, OK? And this noise is more, and then signal is something is this so when you take uh, when you compare these both the spectrum then here the uh, the noise is more as a result that means n is more the numerator denominator part n is more s by n basically reduces whereas here the noise is less therefore s by n basically is a better so s by n is a as a, a matter of concern for many of these uh, spectroscopic uh, persons and to decrease the noise and to improve thereby to improve the the signal one will basically uh, do a lot of things so one of the thing is that uh, so this noise how it is basically over the period of time it is reduced and how it will reduce with the uh, frequency has been plotted here so the noise can be reduced that means the sensitivity can be improved so this is a spectrum of uh, s by n versus the B0, in other words, the frequency also. In other words, the frequency of the proton as well. And you can see that uh, if you keep it in a magnetic field strength at, uh, at uh, let's say, uh, 70 Tesla or 60 Tesla, then its noise is, let's say, it is 1. And then 100 uh, Tesla magnetic field strength, if you keep it, it's a uh, uh, relative uh, S by N is again uh, small. But then, if you keep it at 200, then the relative S by N basically improves. So S by N ratio improves with increasing the increase in the field strength. Okay, that is another thing. Well, uh, the sensitivity, uh, as I told you, that it is possible. Technically, it is not possible in uh, older days, but then nowadays the sensitivity is not at an issue. Uh, it is overcome with the help of improving the the quality of the magnets okay and at the same time that as we are trying to improve the strength of magnetic field and trying to improve the s by n ratio and trying to improve the sensitivity this is actually uh, more associated with the cost also the sensitivity comes always with the always with the the cost not otherwise so this is a magnetic uh, this is, is uh, this picture all these three pictures are the uh, NMR spectrophotometers of different uh, different uh, NMR spectrometers resonating at a different frequencies for a proton. Let's say this is a 600 megahertz. This is already given that uh, 600. 600 means uh, is basically the this magnet is very static magnet, which will resonating 
resonate a proton at 600 megahertz. If you keep a proton there, then it will resonate, it will process at that frequency. And then in this one, it is 800 megahertz. That means if you keep a proton over here, uh, in this particular magnet, then it will resonate at uh, 800 megahertz. This one, it is 900. Okay, so 1100,000. I think up to 1100 or 1200 megahertz. Uh, NMR photometers have been developed as of now. Okay, so as you can see, there's some rough numbers were given. Of course, these are not accurate because time to time these numbers used to change and then place to place, all these numbers used to change but then the strain is remains same okay so the 400 uh, 600 uh, 200 megahertz cost will be lesser as compared to the 400 400 cost will be lesser as compared to 800 800 cost will be lesser as compared to 800 because of the magnets and because of the uh, complex component what we use it in the spectrometer as i told you that the sensitivity can also be improved by concentration there is a N, you remember that the expression what I have given, uh, the sensitivity also directly proportional to the N, the total population, and the total population can be improved by increasing the concentration. You can see an example that this is a, a number spectrum of uh, some compound, uh, you don't have to remember, obviously I can make it out, it is a 13 carbon NMR uh, signal and the 13 carbon NMR signal can be recorded with uh, two different concentration. In one case it is 30 milligram is of the compound is taken and then in another case 1.2 milligram of the compound is taken and uh, dissolved in the same 0.5 ml of deteriorated solvent and record the spectrum. In one case where the concentration is more, you have a more number of nuclei, right? And then as a result of which that the, the noise will be reduced and then you will get a better you will get a better spectrum. Whereas uh, the case where you have taken less compound, then obviously it will not show, uh, it will not give a better spectrum. In fact, the noise and then signal both will be merged uh, together. You don't really make it out. What is the signal and then what is the issue, right? So. The carbon-13, uh, for that matter, I have already pointed out that the natural abundance of carbon-13 is very, very less. It is, it is because of this reason that, uh, I think that uh, slide I have, maybe I, I will tell that point maybe in the coming slides. Uh, but before that, let me tell you, the if you are trying to improve the concentration, then one has to remember the uh, counter measurement and one has to see the counter action from the molecule as well. For example, if you are only concerned about the signal to improving the signal to noise ratio or else uh, the, uh, improving the sensitivity, then you may also think of always that you know, the concentration is the one choice, but then the concentration can basically invite some other problems. For example, that if you have a uh, certain functional group where they can dimerize, the molecule uh, can basically interact intermolecular interactions can possible and then that may lead to dimerization, okay? For example, acid, if you take it, that intermolecular interactions, intramolecular interaction, both are possible, right? So though, uh, as you increase that, this uh, dimerization is a major issue, okay? How this affect? Well, you know that then when something is dimerized, then you may not get the signals what you expected, right? That is an, another issue. One has to be worried about it. And this is an example where uh, the spectrum of uh, some compound is recorded with the different concentrations. Uh, let's say this bottom layer is like one millimolar solution and the five millimolar solution, 10 millimolar, and then 30 millimolar solution. The same compound, but then different amount of compounds basically in, uh, dissolved in a uh, uh, in a constant uh, volume and then such a uh, solution was taken uh, to the NMR spectrum and the spectrum was recorded. Then here you can see that there is a, in this spectrum what is shown here that there is a shift in the a shift of a certain NMR peaks. You can see the green color and the red color peaks. So because of the dimerization and then multimer, uh, multi uh, Multimers uh, formation that basically the signals corresponding to certain uh, NMR signal correspond to certain photons, 
in this case basically shifting here and there okay that is what it is shown that red one initially it is here in one millimolar but then when it goes to the five millimolar this signal is here then 10 millimolar is here and when it goes to 30 molar the signal is here so there is a shift and similarly the green one correspond to some other noise then uh, it is basically changing again so these are some of the things that uh, when you are increasing the concentration to improve this can cause it of course if you don't have this dimerization issue then it is okay and then one of the way to improve the uh, the sensitivity of your spectrum is that basically you can either improve the increase the number of scans or you can average it and then you can average both are possible the signal to noise ratio actually uh, is approximately given by n to the square root of uh, ns so number of scans uh, and then <clears throat> you can increase basically you uh, increase number of scan and then average it then it will give you a better uh, uh, spectrum the rest uh, it is shown uh, pictorially here this is the nmr spectrum of a compound recorded with one scan here and then people have evaluated what is called as a s by n ratio it is 18 is to 1 and later on it was done with a some different uh, number of more scans this is four scan four scans are recorded and then taken to be the average and in this case signal to noise ratio so 34 is to 1 that means s is 1 signal is improving okay and then this one you have uh, 16 scans you have 16 scans then here again it is improving okay so the nmr sensitivity can be improved by in increasing the number of scans and then averaging it okay this is in fact this is the technique that is followed to record the carbon 13 nmr spectrum even today there is no other way that there are two things that is considered one is that the since natural abundance of carbon that is very less the more amount of compound is generally taken a proton armor signal uh, spectrum of a compound can be recorded with uh, roughly about two to five milligram uh, in a 0.5 ml of uh, deuterated solid you just dissolve it and then you can record the spectrum it gives a beautiful spectrum no problem with the uh, eight scans or uh, 16 scan which is a typical number of scans whereas in the case of uh, if you take the same sample and record it the carbon 13 it will not give a better spectrum it has to be given at least a minimum of uh, 500 uh, uh, scans only then you will get a better carbon 13 and also uh, if you add little more compound to the same thing then it will give you even a better spectrum therefore the for recording carbon 13 nmr spectrum there are two things is done one is that people will go for uh, recording higher uh, uh, scans and averaging it and also we will start with a more amount of compound so for recording carbon 13 nmr spectrum normally it requires uh, 20 milligram minimum and then 50 is something that maximum we used to have it and then of course solubility is another issue but somehow whatever it is solubilized within that uh, small volume of 0.5 ml uh, then it's okay with that we will go for a uh, large number of scan. even sometimes we go for 1000 also it depends upon the uh, issue certain molecules may not uh, solubilize uh, properly in a deteriorated solvent Therefore, in such a situation, then we have to go even more number of scans. Okay, it's, it is all basically to improve the signal to noise ratio and to see that this, uh, the signals can be better understood. That is the whole idea of this discussion. Well, this is given uh, is an example that eight scans carbon 13 nmr spectrum uh, is given by this. Okay, or some nmr spectrum is given by this. But uh, the 10,000 scan, if you make it you will get a better spectrum. Here you see that certain signals which are not there, which are visible if you are going for more number of scans. Okay? So when it is averaging out in a, in a small number of scans, all the signals may not be appeared, but then if you go for larger number of scans, it will appear. So all the signals will be appeared, but uh, this is a time consuming job. Okay, NMR spectrum of a proton NMR spectrum recording is roughly about 10 minutes you can finish the job. Whereas carbon 13, as you have to run for uh, many scans, obviously it will take time. It all depends upon the how many scans you are 
basically giving. The other aspect is the temperature. We have discussed that if you lower the temperature, the population difference can be improved. But uh, most, most of the cases, the population difference will not be improved that much because there is some other aspect or some other element which is actually involved as a result of which we don't see much uh, improvement in the sensitivity with the temperature. So what is the other issue? The other issue is that you know, there is something called relaxation. There is something called relaxation of the nuclear spins. Okay, So the nuclear spins uh, will not come back instantaneously to the original position as a result of which the signal will be always broader. And this broadening actually uh, indirectly proportional to the temperature. This broadening is indirectly proportional to the temperature. And if you lower the temperature, the broadening will be more. OK, so inversely proportional. That, therefore, is the broadening. And then uh, that will come into the picture. So therefore, uh, in, a, in a room temperature, it, it occupies very small space. But then uh, as you are recording in a lower temperature, it is getting broadened. That means that some other peaks also overlap with it. OK, so that is the reason why that Theoretically, it is possible to improve the sensitivity by lowering the temperature, but it has a limitation from the other relaxation process. You may not see the, the, uh, the sensitivity improvement as we expected because of the peak broadening. Okay, So this is something that it is explained here. So there are, at a room temperature, they, you just concentrate on this particular star peak just concentrate on the star peak and you see that this is recorded in minus 20 and this spectrum is recorded in minus 40 and this spectrum is recorded at this one. So as you are lowering the temperature, the peak is getting broader. Initially it is a, like one single line, but you can see that this particular one is uh, getting merged with the next one. You can just concentrate this here. This is what the peak, peak I'm trying to explain to you. As we are explain, as we are lowering the temperature, it is getting merged with the other one. You can see that very clear. You can see even other ones. These two peaks also. These are very much almost sharp. Okay, but slowly they are basically getting broader. So this is an issue. So temperature may not be uh, may not improve always the, the sensitivity of the NMR uh, signal. Theory behind NMR signal detection, I will cover in the next class. Thank you for listening and bye-bye. Uh,